Welcome to this new series of the Astro Podcast. Here we're going to talk about something which is less visible in astrological research and the history of astrology, which are documents. These are usually held in libraries, so they are seen to the researcher, but not to the wider audience. And in this series, we're going to show some of these documents and talk a little bit about their importance to the history of astrology. Today, we begin exactly at the starting point. We are going to address not exactly an astrological document, but one which opens the door towards astrology, an introduction to the sphere of Sacro Bosco. The Seer of Sacro Bosco was a bestseller. It was a book uh, which explained in very simple terms the basic elements of astronomy. And it was used in universities and pre-universitary teaching to explain the basic notions of astronomy, the sphere and all the referentials. Therefore, anyone interested in learning or practicing astrology would have to learn from this document. And there are numerous manuscripts and editions throughout time. It was a standard book from the Middle Ages until very late in the early modern period, almost to the end of the 17th century. The manuscript we're going to look at today is exactly a commentary on the sphere of Sacro Bosco. This genre of manuscripts is very common, so we're not talking about a, an exact copy of the book, but um, a commentary, an, ad an addenda that an author has made to the sphere of Sacro Bosco. And this is a very late manuscript, it's from 1620. Um, it is a Jesuit manuscript from the classes of Santo Antão in Portugal. This is a book to introduce the student to the basics of astronomy, something which must be learned properly before going into the interpretation segment, which is astrology. So therefore, this is a very common book because it teaches the technical elements of the sky observation, the referential points, and everything you need for astronomy, navigation, and astrology. This particular book is interesting because it already includes the new discoveries made by Galileo through the telescope and the discoveries that follow. Uh, the most fabulous example there is a diagram with the phases of Venus, which was an important discovery to change the way we saw the universe and cosmology. The book contains the classes of Johannes Chrysostomus Gaul, a Jesuit from Germany, who taught here in Lisbon, in the, in the College of Sant Antão, in its famous mathematical class, the Aula de Sfera, the class on the sphere. Although the document does not contain any astrological elements, at least in an interpretative sense, it does introduce the zodiac, the qualities of each sign of the zodiac, according to natural philosophy, the motions of the planets and the characteristics of the planets in a general sense. Of course, we are dealing with the famous natural astrology, which was clinged to the natural properties of the planets, affecting uh, the seasons, human being, medicine, and all aspects of life. Although the sphere of Sacro Bosco originally does not contain elements of astrology, these books do contain a little bit more of the interpretative version, but no, none of the rules that we see in a manual of astrology. The interesting bit, uh, uh, which I think personally of this manual, is the warning that the author does to those who want to practice astrology without learning the basic astronomy that involves uh, all the calculation. And he calls that um, mathematics, astronomy and astrology has been, have been highly damaged 
by those who are lazy not to learn it properly. The book has a wonderful uh, illustrations on um, the constellations, both of the northern and the new constellations of the southern hemisphere. So it already includes many aspects of the new astronomy of the south. This makes it, it's not a unique book. Um, there are several of this kind, but it is a testimony to a changing era where new discoveries were shaping cosmology and this is a testimony of its, the very beginning of this shift. The author uh, was taught in mathematics in the Jesuit college. It, he taught mathematics um, from 1619 to 1627, after which he departed to Goa, where he lived the rest of his life. This is one of the many testimonies of the teaching of astronomy, mathematics and astrology at the hour of St. Antoine. And soon, in new episodes, we'll see the astrological component of this teaching.